Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of In the Prog Seat. It's Tuesday night. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We've got uh, a sequel to a very well-liked episode that we did a few weeks back where we talked about our favorite prog album covers. Well, you know, there's, the sequel's always got to be the opposite end of the spectrum. So these are the album covers that kind of suck or really suck or pretty much suck. Let me introduce the crew. We got uh, Mr. George Lemay's in the house. Ken Golden's here, professor of Prague. Once again, coming over from the Hudson Valley Square is Mr. Chris Canzanieri's here. Louis Nasser in the house, our center square. Eric oh, yeah. Porter's here. The guy who can't wait to get back to the baseball game, Mr. Chad Hutchinson. Although if you're watching it on this Tuesday night, this game has already happened. So hopefully it turns out well for Chad. Uh, all the way from Scotland, Mr. Stephen Reed and the other half of our Pennsylvania crew, Mr. Anthony Ferrara. What's going on, gentlemen? Hey, That's good. You guys ready to start talking about some shitty album covers? We oh, yeah. are. We are. All right. We're going to go in the same order that I just announced to everybody. George, lay your first one on us. All right. My first one is Semi Ramus. Um, he's ugly. It's poorly drawn. It doesn't connect to anything about the album. Uh, it's, it's just a, a sum zero. I, I can't imagine anybody likes it. And it's a shame because it's a really good record. Uh, we're just doing two at a time? Uh, yeah, why don't we do two? Yeah, we'll do two. Yeah, sounds good. Two at a time. The next one is oh. Working Man. Yeah. The Rush Tribute. Uh, an example of uh, 90s digitalis. Uh, it's bland. It's got nothing to do with Rush. I don't think it relates to anything on the album other than maybe the, the clock sign is a little bit after five. It's a nod to the lyrics. But other than that, it's it's boring. Isn't the naked uh, butt, uh, you know, a nod to 2112 or Hemispheres? Yeah, it's just generic. And I, I've always hated it for whatever reason. So that's my number four. Yeah, it's for not whatever good. reason, I think he gave a bunch of good reasons to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no good. All right, Ken, your first two. Uh, I guess this was fun because, you know, every one of these covers made me laugh, like really laugh. So, um, of course, I'm breaking all the rules. I'm bringing back the hall of the hall of fame. In this case, it's the hall of shame. So uh, I'm I'm giving you two that I'm sure we all have. Not even going to discuss them. ELP Love Beach, just atrocious. And then Fire Ballet Two Two. I mean, two very embarrassing covers. I mean, they're just nothing. Nothing really needs to be said. So moving on to my real picks. First one I have: Echolin as the world. I I don't know how Michael Kaplan approved this. Why the band wanted this? If they did want this, but who the hell would want like? I, Chad, maybe you know. Are they like carved apples? They what are. They they originally were given uh, some stock artwork from uh, from Sony, which I think ended up on a Corn album. Not not Corn. Not forget the name of it. it. Wasn't Corn. Maybe it was Corn. I don't know. It had a bunch of candy corn on it. Whatever the cover was, but it sucked and they hated it. So they yes. decided to carve some apples and shrink them and use that. It's awful. Yep. <laughs> every time. Every time. And it's a really good album too. You know, it is. I, and for me, it might even be my favorite Echolin album. Every time I see that cover, man, I crack up. It's just, it's hideous. It's really hideous. The next one I have, this one's just, just horrible. Absolutely horrible. From the Release Music Orchestra, Life. I mean, this came out on the Brain label, early 70s, I think around what, 73 or so. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's just so terrible. And somebody, somebody approved that. I mean, like, like the band got together and said, yeah, let's go with that. I mean, it's just, you know, usually when you get bad album covers, they usually come from like the drummer's girlfriend. Exactly. You know, and, and you know, and they had no choice and they have to take it. I'm, I'm assuming this was like the drummer's girlfriend came up with this. It's just, just horrible. That is bad. That is bad. <laughs> those are my, those are my first two. All they, right, they, well, they get, they get worse. They're going to get worse. Four. Worse. So you only have one left. No. Oh. I, I make my own rules. Good one, Anthony. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Cans, you're up. 
All right. I don't have that cool app that everybody else has. Um, so bear with me. Um, I'm going to show my stuff on an iPad because I don't own a lot of these albums. Although this one I do own. Oh, that's terrible. Anyway. <laughs> it's that's better a, than the cover. Really? That's a big generator right there. And this oh. is the album. And it's fucking backwards. Sorry about that. But no, it's really coming fine. No, it's, it's, coming fine. Coming it's, coming it's ridiculously neon of the time, you know, of everything that was terrible about that time. I kind of liked this album when I was a kid. I didn't know why the fuck it didn't say generator anywhere on it, but I had the cassette. I believe the back of the vinyl says generator on the back. I don't own that, but this is, you know, eh, graphic design from the eighties. Don't dig it. It does. All right. Thank you, Steven. Thank you. <laughs> My next one. I don't own this one either. Maybe some of you guys do. No. Rock and roll profit from Rick Wakeman. <laughs> That's a classic. That's a this is one. really, this is what this guy was known for. <laughs> Sing top two, getting chicks. And as you can see, he's got a bass player and some girl who's straight out of school. He hung his, he hung his uniform up on the pole there because, you know, he's a schoolboy too. <laughs> and this contains my favorite Rick Wakeman song, I'm So Straight, I'm a Weirdo. <laughs> classic, classic shit right here. But luckily, he's so prolific that, you know, he made 40 other albums and everybody forgot about this one. <laughs> we are off to the races. Lewis, what do you got? All right. Well, since some of my stuff has been picked, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do something. I'm actually going to include myself in the Hall of Shame because many years ago, um, I released the first album with a Baltimore band called Kurgan's Bane. And I would like to I would like you to behold this infamous turd of a cover. Just look at that. Now, if that's not offensive enough, I would then like you to point I would like to point out that the artist whose name was something or other crumb who worked in a pallet restoration factory decided to draw hand portraits of the four of us in the band. Just check that shit out. Wow. <laughs> Lift it up a little bit so we can see you. Yeah, lift it up. We want to see you. Lift it up a little bit. Oh, that, there, there we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm including myself in this list of shame because this is fucking terrible. <laughs> you look like Charles Manson. Well, you know, I, I'm his Mexican cousin. <laughs> the cover and, looks like an Evership reject. So... <laughs> I don't. I don't understand how it happened. I don't understand. I had nothing to do with it. I I recorded the album. I went to Germany. I came back, and this is what I was presented. Anyway, there is that one, and for my other one, um, I'm just gonna switch gears, and say, I'm gonna choose this was by Jethro Tull, which is, I don't have it with Even me right now. But... Here. There we go. Beautiful. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck is that? I, I mean, I know, I, I know that John Anderson has had a long history of trying to one up Monty Python's. Nah, that is just ridiculous in every way possible. It doesn't really. It's, I hate it. So there you go. These are my first two picks. <laughs> there we go, Eric. Well, I think Ken summed it up best for me because when he said, how does a major label let these come out? And you look at this stuff, you know they have a budget. It's not like an independent band. And it's kind of like, even if it, it's more like a what the fuck than, uh, like you just look at some of this stuff, somebody had to approve this. And I did have Eccolin, so I'm going to pass on that one. I'm going with King Crimson Thrack. What is that? Like a muffler with a hole on it? It's That's metal. horrible. It's yeah, art. It, it's not. This is not art. At least not in my house. <laughs> Fuck them all. This is art. It's a. It's a muffler with a hole in it. And because Ken showed Fire Ballet, I was going to do Max Webster's High Class and Borrowed Shoes, but I'll just go with this one because what is that? Yeah, that's a messed I, up. I don't get it. it. Dumb. Just absolutely dumb. Bad album cover. 
uh, those are my first two. All right, Chad. All right, my first one is uh, not working. It didn't turn on, did it? <laughs> you want me to teach you how to use it? You know, I had the thing on. That's weird. It's not working. That's great. You know what? Oh, I told Chad. you I should have just watched the game. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I'm going to shut it down and try it again. That's ridiculous. You want us to move over to Steven while you're figuring it out? No, give me one second. Let me okay. try. See what this thing's doing. You're like in the seventh inning. Right? Uh, this is the last thing while I While Chad's need. doing that, everybody marvel at the delights of this wonderful album cover. There we go. Here. Little Emerson Lake and Palmer play the Bee Gees. There we go. I love the shots of that that were in the, the ELP book that came out a couple of years ago because they've got outtakes from that. Yeah. And I mean, those white pants, the only bit that is still wet is the crotch. <laughs> it's, I mean, they're even worse. It's impossible, you would think, to make that cover worse. It's even worse. Oh, why are there we you looking there, Stephen? <laughs> Look at the moose knuckle. <laughs> You know, at least the one thing you could say, they were in pretty good shape at that time. Yes, of course. Even Greg, yeah. you know, before we went, Shit, before I went like to Greg hell. Walk around like that all the time. That guy's hot. <laughs> no homo. No, no. All so right. Well, you can him in the sea. <laughs> I'm, I'm all figured out now. All right. All right. So my first one is Frog Cafe's Creatures. Oh, I don't know what man. the hell that is. <laughs> It's distorted. Is it a starfish? Is it a carrot? What the fuck is that thing? Mm. It's ridiculous. It's ugly. It makes no sense. It's Gumby. It's, guys. Guys. it's a good album. It's a it is kind of Gumby-ish. Even the colors suck. It's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> and my number four is JethroTells.com. Yes. Someone who just learned how to use PowerPoint found all the new fonts they've never seen before and all, all the clip art and slapped this atrocity together. It's terrible. You guys know I'm not a Tull fan. I'm not picking on them because of that, but this cover is ass. It's terrible. That is just it, 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 embarrassing. 100%. 100%. Good choice. Steven. <laughs> well, the theory is, I suppose, that if a band don't have a budget um, and they're just kind of starting out, and their covers are shit. We should feel sorry for them. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Shit is shit. So I'm going to start with Enchant. Okay, this is a blueprint of the world. Okay, so, I mean, it's literal stuff here. This is like primary school stuff. You'd ask a seven-year-old, you'd give them the album title, and you would say, tell me what you think you see. And that's exactly what it is. And when the album cover is shit, you think, well, do you know what? For album two, they'll make it better, won't they? So this is Wounded. This is album number two, okay? It's even shitter, okay? And you think by album number three, we're about to have it sorted. Time lost here, okay? This is actually improving it because it's so blood, it's so bad. That's a three album run that is just absolute garbage. It's really garbage. And I'm impressed because these are out of the lovely box set. They had a chance to kind of go, hmm, could we do something with these? No, 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 no. Let's double down. Let's stick with these. They were shit the first time and they're shit the second time. So that's my first choice. Second choice. I mean, <clears throat> I'm talking about the sort of thing here that you would say to a seven-year-old, make me an album cover. You know, you, you would imagine a figure for a prog album that's maybe all-seeing, very knowledgeable, quite mystic. And you come up with this thing, this <laughs> nose, face, <laughs> eye thing. By Majestic, the album's called Voz or V-O-Z, V-O-Z, whatever it is. And it's like, I mean... Somewhere in here, there was a good idea, but it's not this, is it? It's really not this. I mean, what the fuck is that? What is it? <laughs> is that a face? I mean, the guy's holding his own eyes. What's happening here? What's going on? <laughs> or I mean, somebody the back, else's. The back's better because <laughs> it has nothing there. I mean, look, look at this. Stare into these. Stare into them. Wow. There you go. That's my first Long you, Every time you look at it, it's something different, right? <laughs> Wow, that's awful. Yeah, that is bad. Holy what God. were they like? An a what was it like an AOR band? What were they? No, they're kind of symphonic. They're a US symphonic <laughs> prog band that kind of does a bit of prog metal in there too. They're all these are good albums. The proviso that I made myself 
was I can shit on these album covers, but the albums are good to very good. I didn't choose anything that I don't like. So I can happily tell you that Majestic are quite good. But that's the album covers. Wow. That is legendary bad. Holy cow. <laughs> Woo! All right, Anthony. All right, my uh, number four and five are going to have a theme. Hemispheres. Going for the one. I don't want to see dudes, but I mean, these, these covers are just, they're terrible. But they're, I mean, they they're, may they're have a, a, a nice idea, but I don't want to see dudes, but I really don't. <laughs> so that's my four or five rush hemispheres and uh, going for the one. Is it the same, but <laughs> might as well be. <laughs> Come on, Anthony, you've studied them for hours. Are they the same, but? <laughs> Right he's, had, he's had those post-its on those CDs for 20 years now. <laughs> no, I just got them today. Oh, okay. He's been tracing them. He's like, he's why, he's why, why are we them. ever going to use post-its? I said, well, I have a project. <laughs> Chuck Alvarez is in the house, and his turn is <laughs> now. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey. All right. All right. Um, okay. Um, my four and five is the alternative cover of um, Shine On Brightly, Porco Harum. And what's uh, the other album cover? What's uh, with the green lady on it? And so it's much better than this one. That's a better ass album, and <laughs> yeah. And then um, what's uh, the um, American version of um, Roxy Music's Country Life? You know, and could, yes, yes, it looks like a, looks like a whole bunch of weed on there. You know. <laughs> Wait, so, did, did they take out the chicks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The U.S. U.S. version, American yeah. Version. The U.S. version, yeah. That what sucks. is wrong with these people? <laughs> is that the back cover of the UK version, Chuck? No, actually, um, what's a yes and no? Yes and no. Okay. No, it's just terrible. I hate this cover. No, <laughs> I actually have this on vinyl. Hey, you know that album contains one of the greatest violin solos ever. You know that, right? Uh oh, <laughs> I didn't. I don't have anything to drink here. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder who played it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Anthony showed you a couple covers with guys' butts. I don't know. I've always thought that this is someone's butt. I don't know what the hell this is. Peter Hamill, the silent quarter in the empty stage. What is that? Is that is like it? an ass crack? Is that some kind of coin popping out of it in the blue toilet water? I don't know. I have no you're idea not, what this is. Not, you're, <laughs> you're the Hamill guy. You, do you have an answer? I've never oh, known man. what this is. Oh, oh, he's he's that was a butt crack, man. <laughs> I've certainly never thought about it that way. I don't know. I don't know what, what is it? I have no idea. I just know it's terrible. The slightest. Mm -hmm. Good album cover. I mean, good album, but terrible, terrible album cover. All right, this to me, I never understood this. I mean, you got a debut album, you're trying to make a statement, and you put out this focus, in and out of focus. It's just a sappy picture of the band standing in front of a house, all smiling, looking all sorts of dapper. It doesn't tell you anything about the album, and you title it In and Out of Focus. They should have just called it Focus if they were going to do that. Boring, boring, boring. It doesn't give you any indication of what the band is all about. Back to George. How is that album? Not one of them. It's not good. A psychedelic. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, it's it's not as they they improved drastically on the second album, but it's it's got, oh, it's got yeah. some things on. Moving waves is the one. All right, and number three. Oh. <laughs> I, I like that cover. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's yeah. the, the font is terrible. The the, the art is bad. It, she's just disturbing that's all i need to say <laughs> I, I didn't cover up the tits because when you did the ranking you didn't cover them pete so no, i didn't uh, I, that's a great album though yeah it's a good like album it. but hey, it is. Uh, my number two electrocution 250 electronic <laughs> cartoon music from hell do i need to explain it's rats wearing underwear i mean it's stupid <laughs> The art is bad, and it made it all the more galling because the album is absolutely incredible musically. It's it's got to be a joke because it's it's that bad. And what has it got to do with cartoon music? It's it's cool. terrible. That's uh, my number two. Cool, Dan. All right, my next one. 
This one cracks me up every time. Great album. Missing Link, Nevergreen. They were a German jazz rock band, uh, a United Artist. Great, great record. So like Embryo, I look at it, I just howl every time. Is that where the it's, wild naked things are? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just awful. <laughs> My next one, this, I, 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 this is like just awful. The Flower wow. Kings, Adam and Eve. The guy, well, you know, I'm going to turn this off because I've got it here. And it's just, it's brutally bad. The guy's like a... Like a brute. Uh, yeah, he's like a, I, I guess he's a brute. He's, he's got a nipple ring. Uh, the, the the woman looks like she's just at it. She just walked out of Delilah's Den over on Spring Garden and Front Street. Um, dancer. I don't know. She's got the strategically placed tattoos with the A and E. And of course you get you get a little boobage, you know, it's it's just and it's really poorly executed. The, and the guy who did it, he's he's usually does like dragons and shit, Cerula Cabral. So he's he's you know, he does a lot of album covers, books, fantasy book covers with dragons. This one is just this one's just awful. Just an awful cover. I I don't I don't know how Royna went with this one. Just awful. That's what I'm those are my numbers. Cool. Uh, three and four. Chris. Three and two. Three and two. All right. <clears throat> my next one was going to be Love Beach, but I think we've talked about the white pants enough. <laughs> uh, so this this isn't a prog band. This is a metal band. And, uh, you know, Stephen mentioned how when you're just starting out, you know, you get your first album cover and you do what you can and, there's an awful lot of really bad hand drawn or hand painted metal covers out there. And, and this is one of the best ones and it still sucks. <laughs> and that is fistful of metal from anthrax. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, listen, what is happening to this guy? Is he getting punched? It looks like he's Ooh, getting punched the back of his head, yeah. and, you know, coffee's flying out of his mouth. And it's like, <laughs> If somebody's blasting their fist through my fucking head, my eyes are going to be closed. <laughs> this guy's like, boom, wide open, watching his tongue go one way. And, you know, it's like, okay, the perspective's all messed up, but, you know, it's violent and brutal. And yeah, 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 whatever. But I never you liked know, this. It's fairly the, popular. The so, hand holding the head is even yeah. more grotesque. I mean, he's going like, <laughs> but from the side. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Love the album, though. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely do. And uh, my next one, number two, this is also metal. This is uh, the last solo album from Bruce Dickinson, Tyranny of Souls. Um, we see, you know, this is uh, another medieval uh, plate, I believe. This is real, you know, old time art. And it features Goat Bat Boy. He's a goat. And he's a bat. And he's got some really saggy ass bitch tits. Poor guy hasn't been to the gym. I don't know what's going on. I guess when you're in hell, you know, they, they make you like this is the kind of guy who wore a, a shirt in the pool his whole life. And now he's in hell and you got to look at his saggy boobies. And even worse, there's some dude living in his stomach. He's in hell, but he looks like he just called his buddy on the phone and was like, what's up? I mean, come on. So. He could have picked better. I mean, like old time, you know, ancient hell art, whatever. He could have gotten, you know, Hieronymus Bosch or something instead of this. But this one just doesn't land for me. So, it's a really good album. Good album. Yeah, good album. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Lewis. All right. So, before we went in the air, I was telling the guys that I didn't have my records with me. But then I realized that if I just look around, I can find substitutes that are just as shitty. <laughs> so I I mean, we could have Big Generator has been mentioned, of course, Love Beach. You can really pick up essentially any Rick Wakeman cover. And it's uh, it, it's enough to kick him in the fucking balls. But <laughs> what I'm gonna go with for two and three is first of all, and, and I and I'm also doing something that Steven suggested, albums that I actually really like. Um, this 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 is a fusion album that I bought from Ken. Kangaroo. Oh, lift it up a little. 
Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Now, if you actually look at the art for a while, it appears to tell an even more disturbing story. There's that green kangaroo flashing, and there's there appears to be a shockwave emanating from his crotch. <laughs> It is it is really remarkable how you can take something this bad and if you just look at it long enough, you start to really just get seasick. Lewis, lift it up a little bit and, and keep it there. For I, I can't see myself, so this is why I'm doing this. There we go. You know, we don't want to see you. We want to see the cover. That's right. So just look, I mean, just look at this and and um, you know, ask yourself some questions. Why was this done? What the fuck is that? That's that's an album I really like. I recommend people hear it. The cover is not, it's, yeah, forget it. This another record that I really like, but I, I just think, you know, again, Der Diablo, Feeding Frenzy, great album. However, wow. let's, let's investigate this popsicle a little bit better, shall we? It appears to have impaled the fish right in the ass, <laughs> but that part is obscured. Also, um, it's... The, the 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 little sticks appears to be moldy or covered in some other weird substance that we can't really identify. But in case that was not confusing enough, the back of it is a fucking tablecloth. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I, I I actually don't know what the fuck these guys were thinking with this cover, if they were thinking anything. Um, but the record is great. This is this is just a terrible cover. I just reached over, found it. Here we go. So, you know. See, there's, there's gems to be found everywhere. Oh. All you got to do is look. Eric. <laughs> All yeah. right. So we've talked about guys' asses, guys wearing white pants, and we're talking about a genre that's, as we can tell by our panel, maybe 99% guys. So why would you put a guy or guys on your album cover, right? Put some chicks on, do something. This is a great album. But number one, I don't know why you want Al Demiola's bad drawing on a cover, number one. And number two, is that actually the best drawing you could get of Al? There are four that's lights. Just, that's terrible. <laughs> and what is this? <laughs> that's a great choice. What a horrible <laughs> album cover. I, I mean, that that's terrible. What is it? I don't know. First Sam. Dixie Dreg solo album in so many years, and that's the best they could do, right? That is, yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. So that's my uh, three and two. All right. Chad. All right. Um, I'm going to stick with a band of nice people that came out with a terrible cover. And we're going to go back to the theme of, um, well, last time we picked on uh, uh, PowerPoint. Now we're going to pick on Photoshop. And that's Is His Eye Move. Yeah. It's not a bad album. But there's, I don't know what it is. It's sort of a page being curled. I don't understand the coloring. Uh, there's, I don't know what the, is that a logo over top of there? The word is that is using, I believe, a bevel and a shadow that they just discovered in Photoshop. It's just, it's a nothing cover. It doesn't mean anything. It's ugly. It's, uh, I don't know. It just, it, it's very, uh, it's a very immature type of cover, and I just, I just never thought, always thought it was sort of a mess. Um, and now, speaking of messes, this might be the mess of all messes. And you guys know I love the Echelon guys, but this was a very, very bad choice. <laughs> this is their '96 outtakes album. There's a couple new stuff, new things on there. It was when the sweet turned sour. I believe the idea was that this was a child who eating ice cream. Vanilla ice cream, which happens to be white like other things. Uh, but that sweet ice cream was actually sour. Um, uh, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Dad, they but, might have the worst album covers of any band. Suffocating the Bloom is bad. Uh, the Poems is bad. Suffocating is all right. Yeah, that cover is like a pedophile's this, dream. This is, yes. It this is. One's, this one's horrendous. That is, um, that is, that is just absolutely horrific. Yes, yeah. so that, 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 that's you know child porn bukkake. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, I so got that. I'm like, God, it's the best they could do. Oh my God, what is this? Yeah, so that's my number two. I got another one. Oof. All right, Stephen. 
so many words I did not expect to hear tonight, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the theme that I've gone with so far, small bands, no budget, okay? But you get a chance, don't you, to put an album cover out there that's at least eye-catching, you know, it's going to make people stop and go, hmm, I wonder what that could be. Well, I think that Credo, with Against Reason, had a budget of about 17 pence. I mean, just look at this. But it it's much more clever than you realise, OK? Because it's called Against Reason. This is yeah. not the skyscrapers here. Look, 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 look. We've got Stonehenge. Stonehenge. It's Against Reason, everybody. That can't happen. I mean, honest to goodness. I mean, did they have something else to do that afternoon? Because... How long can that have taken to put together? I really like this band. I really like this album. But honestly, really? Could you imagine back in the day of flicking through CDs and going, oh, this looks exciting. On the back, it goes, is it reasonable? No, no, it's no. not. Okay. Plus the fact that the band logo is tiny all the way at the bottom and all you see is the big, terrible font of Against Reason. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's terrible. Cheap. Frank Zappa wrote a song about that album cover. <laughs> so my number two, they, and, and this is this is a band that have changed it, okay? So this is Magenta, and this is the re-release of Home, okay? And it's a dreary album. It is a dreary album, okay? But you, with a cover, you could convey motion and that kind of sense of loss. Instead, we just go... Hmm. <laughs> I mean, just... Really, I mean, who on earth is going to stop and pick this stuff up? If you haven't heard this band, you're not going to look at that and go, hmm, that looks like a quality hour's worth of music, does it? So, I mean, at least to be fair, when they did it again, they went and changed it. And it is better. It's not great, but it is better. Still dreary as hell. But <laughs> anyway, I mean, George is going to still shot that. I, I, I think that's the face Tina made when she saw the cover. Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Anthony. All right. My number three is going to be an ode to my good friend Eric Porter up in the <laughs> Albany area because he was not on for our Renaissance uh, review. So I'm picking my number three. He calls her Mary Poppins. This is why he calls her Mary Poppins right here. <laughs> I love this record, but this is terrible. This is why he calls her Mary Poppins right here. <laughs> so uh, what was it? Renaissance, a song for all seasons from 1978. When I when, when people was talking about bad album covers, this is this came to my mind right away because I thought about Eric. So here's Mary Poppins for you. Yeah. My number two could yeah. be my number one, but and you should know that that's not Annie on the cover. Thank I you. know that, but <laughs> just for the my number two, I think Ken's going to agree with me big time on us. This is a great live album. It was they never made a studio, but what is this? That's pretty bad. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, that's what is bad. this? You got Billy Cobham and George Duke on on hands. <laughs> it's yeah. just terrible. You know, Anthony, so it's a I, great I, live album with Alfonso Johnson and John Scoville, but this is awful. I commented <laughs> about that. And uh, I think I played it, and I, I on Instagram I posted about it, and some guys were saying, "Oh, that's the greatest cover." <laughs> I was really? like, "What is that?" <laughs> oh, I hate that cover. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. All right, Chuck. Oh man, well I'm going to go to psychedelic on this one over here. My number three is a uh, Pretty Things of uh, P of Sorrow. I'm oh, like, yeah. man, this is just just. Awful man, it is covered. This is terrible. You know, I, I look at this cover and it just boggles my mind that they allowed for some shit like this to go on. And so this album cover is terrible. Looks like a kid did it. Yep. No. Good. Oh man. And then um, back on the Eklund thing, and so um, you know, <laughs> and no words. <laughs> I. I I can't say anything, anything, anything great about this album cover, <laughs> which I'm glad that they've went it with their faces on there on, on previous on other re-releases. But um, as the world, great album, just terrible, terrible man. This is, this is awful, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's my number two and three. All right, my number three. This is a guy who should have known better. <clears throat> And I don't care 
where you recorded the album or what frame of mind you were in, you don't do this. Oh. Yes. <laughs> you don't do this. I don't want to see Steve Hackett sitting with a people drinking yeah. a cocktail. Over, I mean, it's it looks wonderful where he's at, but mm, come on, Steve. What is? And this? even the picture is horrible. The he rest of it, yeah, it's he looks yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's like a Jimmy, it's like a Jimmy Buffett cover. Yeah, or his Dan Fogelberg album <laughs> or something like that. Like, what is what is this? <laughs> Album's not that great either, but yeah, that's no. Nice. Um, so here I got a twofer for you from this one band who yeah, it doesn't have a lot of great covers, but uh, the first one I'm going to show you is Acquiring the Taste by Gentle Giant. Yeah, oh, that's just cover. the blackheads on the tongue. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, or whatever they are. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what this is supposed to be. Great album, though. This is not a great album, and it's not a great cover either, but we'll go with uh, Giant for a Day by Gentle Giant. It's just stupid. Nope. It's just, just ridiculous. Cheap, what... stupid cover. Yeah, cut along the dotted line, affix elastic to mass, put on your mask, be a giant for a day. Yay! And while we're at it, listen to the album, and the album sucks. And I, I love, love the album. Awful. Awful. This album is terrible. So yeah, those are mine. Next that two. album broke my fucking heart. Yeah, tell, exactly. Because everything it else really is did. either amazing or pretty damn good. And that is yeah. bad. So, yeah. Uh, there's no redeeming feature on that album. The only song I actually attempted to like was Friends, and that's it. And that's it. <laughs> Spooky, Spooky Boogie is okay because there's no singing yeah. in it. At least that kind of, you know, I don't know. It's not a very good album. But but let's just be let's agree that any song or any album with the word boogie is already in trouble. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, Especially yeah. when a band like that does it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No good. All right, I'll turn it over to George. I'm gonna go grab something else. George, go for it. Well, my number one's already been called, but I don't care. Because it needs to be underlined of just how bad it really is. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> if these, guys, if these guys aren't embarrassed today about this. <laughs> they need some humility. This is awful. Hey, guys, let's all get tutus. No. <laughs> how come one of them didn't say, no way, dude? Number one. And it's such an excellent album, man. That's <laughs> you good. Can't, can't, you can't look at that stupid cover. <laughs> was there a vote? I mean, was it three to two? Let's do it. Whatever it is, it, it's bad. <laughs> That's my number one. <laughs> yeah, there's only one possible explanation. A team of cheerleaders said, if you wear these, you can fuck us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way that makes sense. Oh man! Uh, well, oh, I'm gonna, George, I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better, <clears throat> and this one is considered by many to be the worst album cover of them all, and I think they may be right. I'm I'm gonna I'm not even doing the uh, the press. Oh, I know where you go. Oh, yeah. Oof. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, I think I ha I have to turn it on. It's brainstorm. Yeah. Smile a while. Let's see if it's just it's just uh, un i mean it's four guys in women's lingerie and this guy he's got like white lipstick on i mean there is there is nothing good about it and then and then on the back cover you get you get the outtakes i can get more there's more <laughs> you get the outtakes it's uh I made it bad. It's, <laughs> and, then, and then on the inside you, know, you get to see the you know, you got the they got the mascara, yeah. the eyeliner, the whole bit. It's uh, it's it's just remarkably bad. Let's see if I, if you guys could kind of get it in close. It's yeah. reverse, but man, yeah, that's bad. That's that's exactly. close enough. <laughs> yeah, it's you see uh, that in the record shop. Are you gonna scream? Oh my god, I gotta have that album. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it like it takes two two and it takes it to the next level. You know. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's that's brutally bad. I have some bad honorable mentions too, but. Okay. This is my number one. Chris, what do you got for number one? Great. By the way, great album. All right. Number one. Mm -hmm. This this cover makes no sense to me whatsoever. This is Live It Up by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. <laughs> Apparently, in, in the world of this stuff, <laughs> boom. We live on the surface oh. of the moon. Food. We climb tall trees with no branches on them and cut down the fucking hot dogs on the top. <laughs> What the fuck is this shit? Like, I mean, these guys are like linemen. Just, you know, it, 
It's completely nonsensical. It doesn't look cool. It's not a great album. It's, I think it was like 1990. They were doing all the shit people did in 1990 to make me hate them. So this is terrible. This is my number one. I've got some honorables too, but yeah, that, nothing that is that awful, awful. Yeah, awful. terrible. Lewis. <clears throat> all right. So I was debating what would be like a good number one. Because as we have seen, there is no shortage of turds, right? I have personally always thought that the biggest disparity between the greatness of music and the utter shite of a cover is close to the edge. <laughs> like that, that just fucking field of just spray painted green and the logo. What the fuck is that? Okay, exactly. Like seriously, I think that um, you know, Open Roger up the gate was for probably it. smoking gate a little yeah. too much of the ganja. The stuff on the inside would have been a great cover. Yeah. Yep. So I'm thinking maybe the label fucked that up. <laughs> oh, anyway, <yeah>. um, <laughs> anyway, so I, I didn't know. There's others that I mean, Genesis Abacab is a piece of shit. Uh, there's too many bad ones, right? Now there's one that personally has always pissed me off, but I'm, I'm not. This is not my number one yet. I just wanted to mention it, and this is this album, Miles Davis on the corner. <laughs> now this record has every every fucking shitty stereotype imaginable mm -hmm. okay the color schemes are uglier than miles davis beating on his wife and <laughs> i don't really understand why he made these choices or why he allowed this to come out but this is terrible but by number one and i and I choose it because objectively it doesn't work as a cover. It's from an album I love. I absolutely love this album. It's by a guy called Martin Mahieu, who used to I think he played with, with Spaced Out, a drummer. He did a jazz record called The Physics of Light. Now, here's the thing with me. As some of you may know, I'm also a physicist. And one of the things that angers me the most is science fiction that's only fiction. Or, or records that are about physics, but the the people who put them together don't know their face from their ass when it comes to physics. And this is an example. Behold this cover. Look at that, and tell me if you even understand what the fuck is supposed to to be happening there. I I would like to emphasize some of these details. They wrote some formulas down that they found somewhere, even though they're backwards. And the signs are wrong. The handwriting is impossible to fucking read. I, I know what I know optics. I know what these equations are meant to be. This is not it. I, I don't know what the fuck this is. And it really cheapens what is otherwise a fantastic record from a small artist that really didn't do him any favors. Because this 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 is not something that you're gonna look at and go, oh man, I, I want to pick this up. <laughs> the only reason I have it is because somebody gave it to me. And it turns out it's fantastic. What is it, Lewis? It's it's the physics of light by Martin Mahieu's Jazz Fusion. Okay. Um the songs have titles that are you know somewhat physics related. Red Shift, Spectrum Walk, Polychromatic, you know, Prism Suite, Light Waves. These are the names of the songs, but there is nothing in the music that is in any way relevant to these titles. And it's just, uh, you know, don't do this shit. Guys, don't ever, don't, please don't do stuff like this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, physics has a hard enough time as it is, right? It's usually a conversation killer. Already I know that Pete just lost 200 viewers by me just saying physics. <laughs> but um, but in, in reality, um, that is a shame because that's a really, really good album. And that cover, I mean, seriously, look at it. What is this? Got me. You know, it's it's just, it's beyond bad. At least the Eccolin cover, you can ponder. Is, is it Play-Doh, you know, possessed by the devil? Are they, are, did they making, are they making turd statues? Like, what is it? There could be a story there. There's nothing here. Nothing at all. It's it's too dark to read. Um, the font is is a is a weird mixture of math symbols used by somebody who doesn't understand what they are. 
it's just bad. So I love the record. Martin Mahio, if you watch this, I am taking a giant shit. And this is from Unicorn Label, by the way. But um, the record is great. If it's still in print, people should get it. But just forgive the cover because it's shit. <laughs> All right, Eric. I had a couple that were called out that I was debating on using as number one. So I'm going back to the well. I'm sorry, Brett, Ray, Chris, but your album covers suck. And that's F Echo and Suff Suffocating the Bloom. And I love that band, but... Love that album, too. I love that yeah. album, but they need somebody to do album covers for them because that is... Uh, Chad, I'm sure that the other one was worse, but that's a bad album cover. Yeah, the, some of those early ones were done by uh, uh, Greg, uh, Brett's brother. Well, sorry, Greg. That's a bad album cover. <laughs> It is. Right, Chad, I know you got some bad news from the on the game, probably, but uh <laughs> you couldn't tell by my reaction. I could. I was watching you. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, oh, there's course. still one more. <clears throat> what do you got for your top? Oh, my top is I went from probably probably the most grotesque thing I have around. And uh that's Steve Walsh's Glossolalia. Yeah. That's, oh, that's a terrible absolutely film. horrendous. It's yep. this primate hybrid thing with this strange like red snake tail and cacti growing out of his chest and it looks like he's in anguish it's absolutely dreadful i don't know why anyone would would want to be represented by this atrocity it's just this, it's really kind of disgusting and the bright red background just you know, makes it all the worse so that's you know what's one. even more more amazing about this cover man this was made by bill sankiewicz who's a really good artist I think he just didn't want to do it. And he <laughs> sent them something he thought sucked. And the label just said, that's great, man. And they took it. But yeah. you got to see, see the face of the character. If you, if there was a way it, the the face is so bad. It's not even clear if it's in pain or if he's enjoying it. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> he could be laughing or he could be everything. It's not oh, obvious, God. right? Oh. All right. <laughs> It'll be backwards, but let's see if we can get. <laughs> like I said, if you see the face, look at the face, yeah. man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's some bad stuff. <laughs> no good. Really well, bad. That that's creature creature number one. Not, I, I've got some biology, but nice teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I do have some honorables, but that's that's my number one. That's just, that yeah. is just one really nasty, ugly, grotesque cover. Yeah, that is. All right, Stephen, your number one grotesquerie here. Well, my number one, I'm sure that in the comments, people are going to say, oh, but Stephen, it's art. It's art. You just don't understand. This is art. But what I've actually discovered is I've discovered the answer to the question that we've all been asking for years. Not what is prog. Don't be stupid, right? The question we've all been asking is why do women not like prog? In general, sorry, I know some do, but in general, why is it all men? And it's it's this album cover. This is the answer, okay? <laughs> right. Th th this is the look, 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 look at these. Look, look, oh, look, look, look. It's not art. It's just pretentious wank. That's what this is. Look at it. But they all just look bored and thin and pale, and they don't want to be there. We're serious. We're musicians. We don't take photographs. We need to be in some sort of concept. Look, look at the back. It's art, people. This is art. No, it's not. It's wank. Look at that. It's. Oh. I think that photo was taken in the bathroom at Orion Studios. Oh I mean, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, what it is. that's how bad it stinks. Look at it. It's terrible. I mean, it's an uninspired album name as well. Come on, we're on album three now. Well, if it were the CBGBs, Bill Bruford is still scrubbing the sawdust out of his ass. <laughs> that part I just threw on the floor by mistake. <laughs> oh, man. Anthony, what do you got? All right, my number one. Ken and I have talked about this earlier. Uh, comes from one of my favorite guitar players of all time, but this, al this album covers horrid. It comes from Steve Hackett's Wolf Light from 2015. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's just bad. <laughs> Steve with all the wolves. I mean, come on. So that's my number one. All right. <laughs> Look. Oh. 
you know, what's that? I picked what three albums that had um actually four of my five albums all had um alternative covers. My number one had an awesome cover. And then they decided to go with this album cover, and it just broke my heart when I saw the um, the, well, when I saw this cover. Uriah uh, Heep Salisbury. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's that? If you've ever seen the other cover, the other cover is a guy in a tank, yeah, and that shit is awesome. And then you have this cover right here. Great album too. But this Perfect album enough. cover, man, this album cover sucks, man. Here's the original, folks. There we go. Why, that's the album cover it. right there. I, I have it the slice. I guess I they figured the creature would be a better sell for the American market. This, mm -hmm. what is that? <laughs> and what does that have to do with Salisbury? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. You know, Salisbury steak? <laughs> that guy ain't got no meat on him. It's, it's like so... a bat or something. It's your <laughs> Salisbury steak come back to life to kill you, basically. Yeah. <laughs> that is that's my number one man. And it's a great album but you know i look at this album cover and it just makes me want to cry man yeah <laughs> this is, this is you know, awesome. that's, that's my favorite you're right well. give us the tank love man. this album it's my second great favorite album. as well love the album yeah it's a really great album mm -hmm. it is. all right so this is a band that's got a lot of really bad album covers and i love i love this band and i love most of their albums uh i never understood this album cover because it basically proclaims that it's something that it's not it was the mid 80s gee what was really popular in the mid 80s uh gee, metal, metal was pretty big in the mid 80s right of course so let's make our album cover look metal so people would buy it even though we're not a metal band wishbone ash yeah. walk to the bone <laughs> terrible it's, it's, like what is going on here i'll take it out hold on because you gotta see this without the glare if i can get it out come on there we go Look at that, folks. He's got the 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 bone with the blood dripping on it and the knife, and he's uh, you know looks like some kind of uh, cannibal warrior, you know, and like androgynous but, or something. But but he, 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 he it almost looks like uh, transition. I was going to be either or. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he looks like he, he. It looks like a shampoo commercial. <laughs> And, and then maybe look at, he has look at the logo. Scary... Look at the Wishbone Ash logo. It looks like a metal logo, right? Like something that should be yeah. on Metal Blade Records or something. Judas Priest kind of thing. Yeah, this is not metal at all. I mean, it's just it's just normal Wishbone Ash stuff. So yeah, uh, talk about trying to, you know, pull one over. And while we're at it, that's terrible too. While <laughs> we're at it, that's terrible too. I was yep. going to grab there's the rub, which shows, mm -hmm. shows the guy's crotch with the ball in front of it. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> terrible, terrible album covers, but. Some really good albums. I, you didn't like the cover there's a rub. I thought that was great. I thought it was clever. Yeah. Very clever. I guess it's clever, but it's still it's a, it's a it's a play on cookies. It's still a guy's crotch, but you know, the name of the album is There's the Rub. I mean, he's holding the apple right right near his balls. No, it's a play on cricket, is what it is. Because when you play cricket, you shine one side of the ball. I'm a Scotsman, I'm not meant to play cricket. You shine one side of the ball because that makes it swing. And what they tend to do is they rub it on their trousers. It is genuinely here's the rub. Ah, okay. That's kind of went. It is irrelevant, and it and it does stain the trousers. The the red of the ball makes the, the white trousers red. Gotcha. So yeah. I guess that is kind of clever then for those. Who <laughs> lost on that's all lost on American consumers. Yeah, American. Yeah, American 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 American. that's for the three percent of people watching in the UK. Yeah. That's a that's a great that's a great record. That's my oh, yeah. favorite yeah. Wishbone yeah. Ash album. Very good. Yeah, love that album. All right, we'll go around quick with honorables. George, you got any? Yep. Uh. It's either supposed to be funny or clever. It's neither. It's a pig and a Victrola, and that's that's not good. Uh, triple play of really bad font, bad digital art, and not putting the title on the album cover. I hate that. Yeah. This one called before by Eric. I agree. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what it is, and I hate that what font. <laughs> sure, Ken considered this one. Terrible, <laughs> terrible art, disturbing. They made bad album covers. The last one, I guess it's supposed to be funny. Oh. It's just silly in a bad, stupid way. <laughs> That's what I got. Ken, um, this one's for Eric. Al, put your shirt on. <laughs> Please put your shirt on. It's just terrible. Uh, 
know, I, I mean, it's, I mean, I got the album cover here. I mean, it's just like he's covered in hair. I mean, just <laughs> uh, next one, great album. Why don't women like Prague? Yeah, <laughs> this, now this one's actually a really good album. Quite rare, czar, and he, I, he, you're not sure what's going on here. This guy with this weird look on his on his face, but then you look over and it's it's a bear, like it's a, a bear with a crown. I don't quite, I never quite understood that cover. It was very disturbing. Here's a here's a classic terrible one. Yes, Tormata. Yes. So the story was that they hated the proposed album cover so much. And they were, the album was going to be called Yes Tour. And they hated the album cover so much that Rick Wakeman threw a tomato at it. And so they renamed the album Tormato. And then I'm going to take some credit. This was an album that I put out. And the cover's pretty fucking bad. By a band called Manticore. I don't know if you could... I don't know if you, it's maybe hard to see with, you know, this small frame. But we had a lot going on here. First of all, a really bad logo. The words Manticore with like feathers coming out of every letter. You have a pilot. There's somebody riding a dragon with like a, a torch. You have a blue sphinx over here. It's it's hard to it may be hard to see, but yeah, it's it's quite quite terrible. And I remember when the band sent it over from Sweden. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then it sat with my graphic designer for years. And then he was moving and he said, Ken, what do you what do you want to do with this thing? I said, toss it and put it in the skip because it was it was huge. And uh, yeah, we threw it away. It was it was it was awful. If we if we have time, Pete, I've got a great story about how I made a pregnant graphic designer cry over her art. Oof. All cover right. art. So if we have time, I'll, I'll be happy to tell the story. All right. Chris. Okay, I found myself sitting next to a pile of some pretty disgusting crap here, some uh, promo type stuff. Uh, here we have a promo CD from the Tories. These guys are underwater, but they're also still sad, sad Brits. <laughs> I've never listened to this. I don't know where I got it. I don't like it. <laughs> a sweet release from the Skittles candy. As you can see, they're also musical notes because Skittles means music to me, boy. Well, that's and awfully I, clever. Yeah, <laughs> this is volume one. More to come, baby. This one has Matchbox 20 on it. Killer. Yeah. <laughs> then I have a cool CD that's all about me. I've got a lot of cool kid songs and about they're all about me. Somebody bought this for me for a joke. I found it today. I can't remember who I got it from. I'd love to call him up and say, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, you, you, you Google bad album covers, you know, you, you Google, you take a look and like people have photoshopped them, you know, and you're like, well, is this real? Is this not? Or whatever. So I made one myself. This is an unreleased album. It's called Medieval Times. It's by me. And, you know, it's showing a, a pretty typical medieval sword fight. Um, you know what? Let me down the brilliance on this a little bit. Yeah, you can see, you know, strategy going on, but, you know, real old time medieval sword fighting going on there. But yeah, I'll be putting this out in a little while, a couple months. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting so. defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it is different back then, but it worked. So. Somebody once sent this to me as a, as a gag Richard <laughs> Simmons, Party Off the Pounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> All right, Lewis. I got a couple. Um, this is a phenomenal album with Jen Hammer, Gene Perla, and Elvin Jones on the mountain. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the actual fuck? God okay. damn. I I'm sorry. The album is monumental, and this cover is... It's... What? Um... It's in the quarter of Crimson King just. <laughs> yeah, but this is actually a photograph. It's not like they made him ugly. The guy just made that face. <laughs> There's, here's another album that I got from Ken, also very good. Um, Sote in Copa, Tulio de Piscopo Revolt Group. 
Look at that. Just fucking look at that. Look, look, look at the penmanship that was required <laughs> to make this, you know, half mast, weird ass mushroom, broken thumbtack. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be. <laughs> Picking right off a cocktail napkin. Yeah. This is, I mean, I, I have wiped my ass and come up with better than this. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that simple. This is terrible. It does not do justice to the record. This is from one of my all-time favorite artists. Um, there may be something more to it that I'm not really understanding, but um, I I really don't like this cover at all. Mingus Epitaph. Hmm. It's a very <laughs> weird thing. It's just, um, again, I'm not sure what he was trying to say, but I wish he hadn't. <laughs> right? this is, that, that's all I will say about that one. But I wouldn't be complete if I didn't also diss a record I had nothing to do with, but was put out by a very dear friend. As you guys may know, I work a lot with Matthias Olsen, who's a, he's a very prolific guy. And when he was putting this record together, we were drinking here in Chicago, and he said, I'm going to show you the cover for my next record. And he reached over, and he grabbed a photo and he made it into the cover, and I told him, "Please don't." But he did, <laughs> and this is this is it. Molson, oh, yeah. be my baby tonight. <laughs> and um, he handed it over to some some wino who was there at the bar because we, of course, we were day drinking. And the guy looked at us, looked at this, said, "Will you buy me a beer?" And I said, "Sure." And he rated it. He gave it five stars, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You know, it's, um, I, I don't know what to say. I love Matthias. <clears throat> Problem with making gaggy covers or gaggy albums is that they never, they, they, you know, they're only funny for the first two minutes, right? And then you have to live with it for the next 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. That's but um, there it is. The poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, you got any left? <laughs> I got a couple. Uh, this one's for Anthony since he did one for me. Hey, Stephen Wilson, go grab a gas mask and we'll take a picture of you out in your backyard. Ridiculous. <laughs> Great players. Somebody's going to tell me this is art. It's a bunch of dots on the front of an album cover. That was Terrible. bad. <laughs> Star One. What is that? It's a mess. I don't know. You can't make out what that is. It's, I don't know what it is. And this one always, this one I think is more funny, but it is bad. Ned Sylvan, <laughs> what is that that is flying into your hand? And he's half cartoon, half picture. So whatever. I don't know. I'll say this. If your first name is Nad, you have to take life with a smile. Apparently so. <laughs> so there's that. And um, I, I like him for that. No, he's, he's he's rolling with it. But yeah. Cool. Chad. All right. So my first one is Alan Parsons Gowdy. Oh, yeah, um, not much thought went into this. You you base <laughs> the name off of Antoni Gowdy, the uh the architecturist uh from Spain. And the best you can come up with is a light pink cover with light green rectangles on it. And some hand drawn crap font, just awful. Um, next one, Tony Banks solo album, Strictly Ink. Now it's it's not a bad album, you know, it's a little more on the poppy side. But <laughs> what the hell does this have to do with anything on the album? Neither one of them look like Tony Banks or uh, what's, the, what's the guy's or name Jack from Hughes. Uh, Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes, and uh, the one in front, I don't know, it's a male or a female or both or what? It just it never made any sense. It just looked like a couple drawings. Like, oh, let's just throw that on some stock and we'll call that the cover. Everyone's favorite, the white pants. Oh, gosh. Uh, this is a bad one. How about Fuzzy Duck? That's a, That's great a horrendous record. cover. A great it's a, record, though. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a stupid looking duck. It's a horrible font. The cover color is like la last year's mustard. It's horrible. <laughs> Um, then let's go to the late great Kevin Gilbert and Caviar, just a little grotesque. 
<laughs> just a wo a shirtless woman with a long tongue licking the crotch of a of a of a Ken doll. Sure, makes sense. Let's put that on the cover. Dumb, ridiculous, off-putting, lame. Speaking of lame, Stephen, I'm sorry, but anorectophobia, no thought. <laughs> just dumb. And they made they tried to make this into like a little uh, like mascot kind of guy. Never floated. I, just well, I mean, they're, they're, they're lucky South Park doesn't listen to Marillion or they would have had some. I know. It's a, it's a bunch of Kennys. Yeah. I think they called, I think they called him Barry. Barry, that's right. That's well, you right. Know, your body uh, then there's, of course, there's there's the king of bad covers. And we'll go Rick Wakeman's No Earthly Connection. Well, the, actually, that was kind of a cool cover because uh, it, I don't know if you know about that. I forget, I forget what type of art that's called. It came with a, a cylindrical mirror that you would tape together. And then yeah. when you would put it in the center of the album cover, it was a portrait of Wakeman. It's a stereographic projection. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's... Well, in the years, in the in the era of CD and beyond, it's a yeah. ridiculously stupid looking but the, Yeah, the actual <laughs> album came with this uh, foldable mirror and you would, you know, put... Well, so like like it together, together and then you would hold it there. Over. Yeah. Forget yeah. It. And of course Tormato. And then I have one special gatefold going back to Mr. Wakeman. And guy had to share that. Yes. That is just <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> Hands and fingers and toes on the keys, stretched across a chasm in the snow. That is just utterly horrendous. That is it's utterly bad. Mm -hmm. and the, the shitty smile on his face it just brings it all together <laughs> you know, he's wearing that trait that track suit that's important he looks the like the greatest american track. zero yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. steven you got any uh, left yeah here we go i've got ever from iq just great uh, great album awful cover very good absolutely album. i've got kowtow from pendragon who at least have the decency to make it look like the person on the cover is embarrassed because this is not the best album. So at least the person on the cover is kind of like... <laughs> um, I've got um, The Master of Illusion by Saga. Oh, oh yeah, that's terrible. It, I like that album. That's not a cover. Four-handed... What? E? What? Yeah. <sighs> I've got Evership with the Uncrowned King part there one. There it is. I was waiting for Evership. This is terrible. Look at that. Look at the colours. Look at the. Look at that. But I mean, and I might not do it justice here. Are, are those you pilgrims? Really, you have to do this. You have to come right in. They photoshopped their own faces onto oh, this. Look, that is bad. look, look. That, I mean, that's <laughs> and they look earnest. I mean, they're actually standing there going. <laughs> it's it's, oh, wow. I mean, it's so it's a bad. Terrible logo. Make it worse. Yeah. It's a horrible logo. And then he's already been mentioned, but you can imagine if you're in a massive band and those solo careers kicking about and somebody's having lots of success and you're not. And all these people are kind of going, do you know what? The other guy's relatable. He wears cool clothes. He's kind of hip and with the times. I give you Tony Banks on the front of Fugitive here, do you know? I mean, this is like the, his Miami Vice album. Look at this. What is going on? Go on, Phil can carry off the jacket. Have a jacket. Go on. It's really bad. Really oh, good album sketch, sketch drawing of a, of a suspect. <laughs> Not a good he album looks, either. He, he looks better on the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. All right. Cool. Anthony. I just got one. Um, <laughs> God love him, but this is this is terrible. <laughs> oh. I mean, as much as I love Jean Luc, this is just <laughs> awful. The, the the grin, the leather pants, it's just awful. So that's my honorable mention. A taste for passion from 1979. Looks yeah. like he snuck in to take the picture. Oh, oh man, he looks like Shaggy from Scooby Doo found a <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. oh man, Chuck, you got any left? Have two. All right. Um. Oh boy! Yeah, <laughs> this is the move. Uh, and if you're not looking closely at it, so you will never know what the hell this is, man. Great music, man. Forgive me, or forgive the the gloss on it, and so because I have the light in front of me. But um, you know, this might have been cool in 1967 or 68 when this album came out. 
But you look at this shit now, and so and you're like, what the hell is that, man? It looks like Beetlejuice threw up. Oh gosh, it looked like he more like he like, did something. But else. you know, like the cover says "move," but yes. everybody realized that they couldn't read it, so they put the name on the upper corner in a cloud anyway. Mm -hmm. um, then my other one is from my favorite jazz band, so your favorite jazz rock band, if you can call them that. Um, oh yeah, this album cover, man. You know what's the the. And then if you if you ever get to see the the back of the album, you know where it has all of the like all five of them all like floating, like you see their their bodies like like twisted and floating from like ether or whatever. Uh, Weather reports first album from nineteen seventy one. What is that? Don't know. Still to this <laughs> day we don't know. <laughs> all right, I got two real quick. One has uh, been out for quite a while. The other one's a brand new album. Uh, King's X Dog Man. Oh, I never yeah, liked that's a that bad one. Mm -hmm. Love this album, but what, what, you know, come on. Yeah, there are a bunch of different colors of that, too, I think. I know. Yeah, it's, it's, blue and... and it's all, but it's all the same blue. negative of a dog. And it's like, you know, what does that have to do with Dog Man? I, I don't know. Whatever. And then this is wacky. This is a Norwegian band called Tusmork. So you got a lovely naked lady on the front, but that's not the worst of it. Hopefully this comes out okay. Get a load of what's on the CD. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what in the world is that toad doing to that lady? Oh my. Is that, Pete, is that Hebrew at the top? I don't know. Maybe it is. Let I, me see no it. I think it's Hebrew. That is Hebrew. Yeah. It is Hebrew. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is Hebrew. That is Hebrew. Uh, oh, this is kosher or something. I don't know. The back is even weird too. Oof. Do frogs eat kosher? <laughs> well, that, that, that frog was trying to get his kid to go back to human. I guess so. <laughs> it was trying to persuade the lady of his attention. Wow. He's in deep, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I have one more that I forgot, if I could just okay. indulge me. So this is actually one of the rarest, if not the rarest, album in my collection. And uh, I did this for Anthony because I know he loves one every time I say penis. Nice. So he gets very excited. So, so this is by a Swedish artist named St. Michael. It's a psychedelic album. I believe it was the early 90s. They only made 25 copies with this cover. And I covered it up. Oh my it's God. called The Unknown. And this guy had some prodigious junk. And he wanted to show it off and put it on his album cover. Wow. So, yeah. So the actual album, it's, you know, the one that went into general production was completely different. But you know, they, only, they only made 25 of these. And uh, that's probably for the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I I did a little post-it ma uh, magic. There you go. Everybody's been using their their post using their post-its well today. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, I, before I we go, Mr. Chad is our next contestant who will be picking our album yes. study. So he's going to reveal it right now. So our next album study, I was between two, and thinking about the time of the year and kind of the feel of music. Um, I'll, maybe I'll tell you guys offline what the other one was going to be, but I'm going to go with Opeth's Damnation. Ooh. A little transition. A little, it's very different for a, a metal band. Um, it gets mixed reviews. Uh, we'll see what the panel thinks. So that's in two weeks. That's a good choice. Wow, very nice. So album study, Opeth's Damnation, they're... Uh... One of two albums they released uh, at that time. One was a full-on death metal, progressive death metal assault, and that one is kind of folky and proggy and atmospheric and completely different. Clean vocals and all that sort of stuff. So there you have it, everybody. Stay tuned. Two weeks from today in the prog seat, album study, Opeth. First time. That's first time we're like featuring Opeth, I think, on any show on the, in the prog seat. So very cool. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn oh, time. Damn time. time. So George Lemay, Ken Golden, Chris Canzanari, Lewis Nasser, Eric Porter, Chad Hutchinson, Stephen Reed, Anthony Ferraro, and Chuck Alvarez, I.M.P. Pardo. See you all real soon. Two weeks on In the Proxy. Take care.